Hey guys, how's it going? This is the Big Bang Big Bang Podcast coming to you from Tijuana. I mean, he did my um Jorge Barva, and I'm here with my co-host Adrian Pedrin. Yeah. <laughs> uh, today, um, well, last week we talked about you know virtual reality versus reality. Um, today we're going to talk about we're going to discuss I think uh, a little we're going to go a little bit off you know in another in another arena. You know, but it's really regarding you know the this this you know tension between you know what's what's the difference between crap and good enough, um, and this goes directly to to the you know topic of innovation. Um, you know, it, it it personally it creates a lot of tension in myself because you know I I personally think we're surrounded by a lot of crap, but even more so by by good enough, and I don't think people really understand. Uh, or discern the difference between one or the other, especially when they want to create something. Um, you know, for example, uh, I'm a big user of of Uber, and you know, last week I wasn't for some reason I wasn't able to pick up an Uber. Or either my connection was 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 messed up or something. Something was wrong with the app, so I had to take a a more traditional type of taxi. And you know, as soon as I, my buddy and I got into the taxi, the the, the taxi driver gave us each a uh, his personal business card. So the first thing that I did was I uh, you know went on that website through my phone, and <laughs> I was you know I wasn't surprised as to what I saw, but at the same at the same time I was thinking, well, these guys are competing against Uber, it's, you know, to a certain degree, um, you know, and they either they don't really get what's going on. But they simply believe that simply putting, uh, you know, a mobile optimized website somewhere, and then promoting that to their customers, that's going to change their minds. And and you know, there. Wait, wait. Was it mobile optimized? It was a mobile optimized, oh, but it wasn't. Um, <laughs> I mean, it was. It was. I mean, it's it's one of those things that anybody can can do in you know five minutes. But I mean, the point being that you know, it's one of those things that. Is is you know if you if you compare them both you know in terms of Uber is, is complete service and then this other thing, I mean you will think you will come to the conclusion that one's crap and the other's not. <laughs> um, frankly, it's not even good enough. It's just you know it's it's crap, frankly. And and I mean it, one thing is is you know obviously um, Uber was created in. In Silicon Valley, so I mean, it's number one. There's high levels of intellect there and, and understanding and influence as to as to how to build something that's you know world class. And and you know these taxi drivers are, you know, <laughs> most of these the people who either drive a taxi or are employed by somebody who, who created a taxi service are either just you know doing it to make a quick buck or whatever. Um, so that that's really an influence as to how they perceive what they're doing. But you know, it's it's really to me it's very you know, annoying to 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 meet you know because I I've and you know this um, you know I've been in the startup ecosystem for quite a while now and you know I've I've gotten to you know to coach entrepreneurs as well as you know sometimes even putting my hands into the projects and you know something that really comes up all the time is they just basically want to create something for the hell of it. Um, um, it's just, and, 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 you know, to make a quick buck, um, most things to make a quick, buck. to make a quick buck. Yeah. And, you know, there was this one guy specifically who, and he's well known, uh, at least here in Tijuana. And he just, I mean, I remember he told me he, he wanted to create basically jobs.com, but for, for Mexico. And he had already had the template or whatever on a website or, or testing prototype. So the first thing that I did was I did it in front of him. I right clicked on the website and it said, "Show me the source code." And then I went to the other website, to the to the to the original one, and I saw the source code. And I'm like, "Dude, you're just copying the other guy." It's, it's, I mean, this is I mean, I'm, I'm I'm not serious. I didn't take a picture of it, but a mental picture is in my head of that. And you know, his reaction was like, "Well, I mean, you gotta copy the best." And I was like, "Yeah, but it's not just blatant copying. I mean, if you want to make something, make it something better. I mean, don't just." Assume that that they are they are right in what they're doing. Um, still, I mean, 
I mean, what's insane is they copied the code, but they didn't copy the the view of the thing. So it looked worse. They operate the same way, but it looked worse. <laughs> you know? So that goes directly... To, I mean, to me, it was crap. I mean, you compare one to the other, and it's like, dude, I mean... <laughs> Just because I know doesn't mean I can't, I mean, I can't, I don't have an opinion on this. It's, it's insane because, I mean, yours looks like crap <laughs> and it operates like crap. I mean, it doesn't even work the way it's supposed to, um, <laughs> you know, so I don't know. What do you think? I mean, because this is, I mean, I know, I know it, it also bothers you in in, in diff, complete different way to me because it's like, <laughs> you see it everywhere. <laughs> yeah, no, it bothers me in every way. Because especially <clears throat> for the last 10 years, I was uh, very fixated on quality, quality of films, quality of, uh, of the things I did, like the achieve the best quality ever. But with a budget, it became hard, but I still did it. I still feel like I set a standard for quality with no equipment or almost no equipment. But... The my quality didn't count because only like one or two people appreciate it, and the the main public here in Mexico doesn't care about quality. For them, is give them what they want, and a lot of that is crap, like the local um, soap operas. Not not even local Mexican local soap operas. They are the quality is it's bad. It's really 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 bad. But still. People love them and they make tons and tons and tons of money. Why? Because people like crap. So whenever someone makes something or in my case, someone created like a short film and it was crap, they still celebrated it because there's nothing else there to compare it to or to say, you know what, this other guy did this and it's way better. So you don't deserve a prize. You should keep at it and get better and present something that is not crap maybe it's good enough take it from crap to good enough <laughs> so yeah that that pisses me off that we celebrate crap and we shouldn't so <laughs> you know there's always also this notion of uh you know under promise and over deliver <laughs> um which is very um, ubiquitous pretty much in the business world uh, but I think I think a lot of people take that to to the extreme because it's basically just playing with people's emotions um, and their understanding of something um, I mean for example you know this whole this, this concept of lean startup now for for those of us uh, who I don't know who I don't know, either either we're either just born with the whole thing or we just have that mindset of experimentation. You know, the whole lean startup thing is really not that, you know, a big deal. Uh, <laughs> um, when I first heard about it, I thought, well, that's just a good way to package a series of concepts into a nice looking uh, methodology to follow. That's what I thought. Make no, absolutely, no, actually, I haven't even read the damn book. Not because I don't, I don't care about it. Just simply, you know, I I, I know what he's this guy's saying. Um, I get it. You know, intuitively, I already get it. But, you know, and you know, when 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 I when I brought Start a Weekend to Tijuana three years ago, um, the whole lean startup thing comes with package with the with the program. Um, and I remember my my other collaborators being saying, "Oh my God, we got it made because we got this methodology methodology to follow." And I'm like, we don't have anything. <laughs> we don't have the damn thing. I mean, just because you give somebody a methodology to follow doesn't mean, you know, greatness is going gonna, is gonna, to, you know, be a result. Um, truthfully, um, you know, and being not just uh, involved in the ecosystem of entrepreneurship, but also in, in the innovation world and having to, you know, to deal with, with consultants who supposedly are innovators, most of them carry a... Um, you know the bunch of frameworks and methodologies, and I think that's their excuse for saying, you know, if we follow this, then this is going to happen. I, 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 I think it's completely, complete BS. Um, number one, I mean, does did Steve Jobs ever follow a methodology? I'm pretty sure he didn't. Bill Gates, he didn't. <laughs> it was just a mindset thing. 
And I think it's more important to imbue people with, you know, the capability to, to develop a mindset as opposed to, you know, giving something, you know, simplistic ideas of, you know, under promise and over deliver and then follow this methodology. So, you know, you'll, you'll figure, you know, you have a direct, a direct route to success, whatever the hell that means. And, you know, cause you know, it, it, this is very simple. I mean, most, I'm pretty sure that most of the stuff that comes out right now is based off these methodologies that, you know, are basically just saying, you know, let's put a prototype in the market and see what the hell happens. And there's nothing wrong with that if you if you have a point of view about it. But most people do not have a point of view about it. They're just basically putting it out there and seeing what the hell happens. Most of the time they'll come back and say, ah, these people, we did, you know, mar market validation and these people all said, ah, they told us this and told us that, and they want to include it in the product. Then they, they become, then they come down to this uh, next step, which is you know deciding what to put on it and what what not. And most of them just go with whatever the other person said, and end up becoming crap <laughs> because they have no point of view about it. <laughs> they got no point of view about the future. They got no point of view of the context, of the lives of the customer. I mean, they got nothing. <laughs> They're just doing something just because do they want to do something. It's not a. It's not their little baby. It's not their little project. It's, it's not just, the, I'm going to do this, and it's going to have this, yeah. this, 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 because of this, 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 blah, blah, blah. It's like, let, let's do something. Okay, let's do something. Okay, let's do it. Yeah. What do people want? Let's give the people what they want. That's that's the worst decision ever, giving people what they want. That's it. And and it becomes a problem because if, you know, the, the you're basically, you're basically putting stuff out there that people are either going to reject immediately. I mean, they're going to use it. Maybe just because it's something they just put in their hands, it's, you know, if it's marketed, it's new, they'll, they'll take it, then they'll probably leave it. But that's what happens. Um, there's And there's no degree to, obviously, even though if you go to the other extreme and say, oh, we're going to be very, very uh, methodical about this and, and, you know, attention to detail, I mean, that takes you to the other extreme, which is, you know, over overshooting and never, overanalyzing and never, never launching anything. So, I mean, it, but I think the point is that you need to have a balance, but more importantly, you have, you need to have a point of view. <laughs> a point of view is very important. A and reason to want to do something, right? A reason to want to do it and have something in your head as to why you want to do it that way. Yeah. <laughs> Not just simply, oh, let's do that because the other guy's doing it. And then just copy whatever the hell the, the other guy's doing. Or the one we hear a lot. We're going to be the first ones in Mexico slash Tijuana oh my slash... Baja California. That's, that's an, oh, that's like their marketing ploy all the time. What? Why do you think this is gonna make money? Because no one else is doing it. Yeah, it's We're insane. Be first, I, I have a. I mean, uh, yeah, I have a buddy who, who, who last last year, uh, he was presenting me this project. He's he's he launched, and the first thing he put he put on the email was, "We are the first ones in Baja California doing this thing." And I'm like, I sent him an email right back and I said, well, you're not the first ones in the world, so why, <laughs> why do people care about that, right? And I wasn't being an asshole. I was just saying, you know, have bigger ambition than this. I mean, <laughs> I mean, are you, if you're just basically buying the same equipment as the other guys and saying, oh, but they're, gonna, they're the first ones in the world. I mean, doesn't mean because they're the first ones they don't suck. <laughs> Usually when you're the first one, nothing has been defined. So the market has not been defined. And if you're not good at figuring out or defining that market, somebody else is going to do it for you, which is what, you know, one, you know, a bunch of companies that, you know, run the world at this point, that's what they did. <laughs> I mean, Facebook was not the first social network. Oh, Google no. was not the first search engine. Apple was not the first, the first computer. <laughs> They basically just the redefined first, it. It wasn't the first MP3. It wasn't the first yeah. iPad. It wasn't the first anything. They, they, they just, just made it better. It. They made it better. They, they made it better and... And they, they figure it out with the timing and all these other factors. But um, what they all have in common is they have a point of view. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're not just, oh, let's do this because, you know, it's a good market opportunity and all this other stuff. Yeah, they had a goal. It's it's makes makes it, life better or something it's, like it's, that. Yeah, it makes life better. I mean, it's it's obvious that, you know, that, you know, there's, there's, there's a vision. There's something more than, you know, that, like, there's, there's this book that I don't remember his name, Marco Scharch, I think. He wrote a short ebook and one of the things that he talks about is how Google thinks. And I really like this one because I empathize with it. It's basically uh, Larry Page, which is who is one of the co-founders of Google, 
has this question that he asks himself all the time, and he's he's he thinks about it. And, you know, frankly, I do as do myself. I think I you know the question is, what do I want my customers to become? And that's that's really what you know. It's it's putting the customer at the center of every of every decision, but not taking everything they say as as granted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> you 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 want to make everything better for them, but you don't take it for granted everything they say to be as gospel <laughs> and that's the huge difference you listen but more importantly you also watch them <laughs> so i mean the point is that you know you don't you don't create a future or uh you don't go beyond you know good enough and crap simply by you know being a good imitator <laughs> you have to be a good imitator and a great tinker. <laughs> yeah, make better, make it better, make everything better. Make it better. I mean, and you see this in even in other industries, and not just tech. I mean, it happens in. I mean, a lot of people don't know this, but you know, Disney Disneyland was not the first theme park. <laughs> Disneyland was not the first theme park. I mean, and I mean, I remember because the story is very simple. I mean, Walt Disney was going to this to this place. Not not call it a theme park at that point, but you know, basically some place where you go with your family, and he thought, man, I mean, this place sucks. I mean, it's not literally what he said, but uh, that's really what he was thinking. This place sucks. I mean, it could be a whole lot different. And then he connected the dots between what he had already with his characters in the movies, and said, why don't I just create you know a whole world about all these characters? That would be more fun than this, <laughs> just going to the park. <laughs> and then you know, next thing you know, he's got this vision, and there you go, right? Oh, well, one thing we were talking about this earlier. Um, I I don't know if it's true, but I read that he supposedly went through twelve investors before. No, he went through over over a hundred before he actually got the money to make the park. Yeah, and it was ba and that was they were bankers, not were angel bank investors, bankers. Bankers, yeah. <laughs> so a lot of people talk about the success, but I mean that was like what a hundred no's, more than a hundred no. No, uh, more than a no. hundred knows over a hundred knows, and who knows how much time? Yeah. <laughs> who know who knows how much time? I mean, and it and and it's it's driven by and nobody can say listen and and this is very very important because nobody can say that Disney is crap. <laughs> There's nobody in the world that I know is going to tell me even if they don't like the cartoons or or going to Disney World and putting themselves through the lines and and, and whatnot. Nobody will tell you. The Disney or the concept of Disney is crap. <laughs> I think, and this is going back to VR, or even good enough. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Disney to me is a place you can escape reality from. Yeah. So when you're standing one hour in one ride, you're not standing in the middle of the sun. You're standing in a in like a little themed according to the ride you're gonna go on. So it feels like you're you're not even. You're you're in another place. You're you're you kind of feel relaxed. You're, I don't know. It's weird. It's, it's kind of like, like the same about uh, virtual reality, where you escape reality to be someplace else. And I think Disney is the one who makes it better. Yeah. Than anything and in any other place, they know how to do it better. They have strict rules about the character. They have strict rules about everything, just to never so you never uh, lose that magical sense that you're someplace else that you don't have to worry about anything until tomorrow or stuff like that. And I think that's why Disney works so well. Yeah, and, you know, there's no... I mean, because, you know, the word better is kind of... Um, I mean, everybody has their own, you know, criteria as to what that means, and that's, and that's perfectly fine. But, I mean, if there's one thing, for example, Apple, who is, you know, quote-unquote synonymous with with uh, high quality um, I mean pretty much every almost everybody has or either wants or has a copy of, of an iPhone or <laughs> something that looks like it um, and the reason being is not just because it's popular because it's because you you have something that's you know different it works <laughs> yeah it uh, works that's it it's, it's, it works it's, it's, it doesn't give you a headache I mean it's it's all these things you know put put into some one little tiny thing and, and it, to me it's you, you either have a like a samsung 
or an iPhone. Samsung runs on I forgot the operating system. What is it? Samsung. Yeah. God damn it. Android. It's Android. Yeah. Yeah. So Android's more like a, for people who want to who want more power, like you said, more yeah. able to do more freedom. It, yeah, all the freedom you want. You can do anything with a with the Android system. But the iPhone has a lot of restrictions. Restrictions that a lot of people don't even know it has, and they don't care because it works and it does what it's supposed to do. And it's a kind of a like a theory I have that people need control. People yeah. can have freedom. People want freedom, but they can't have freedom. They don't know you, what to do with it. <laughs> if you give an Android to an iPhone user, they're gonna probably think it sucks, <laughs> or they're not gonna be. They're gonna fuck the phone up in a few minutes because they have access to a lot of things they shouldn't. And that's pretty much what I think about the human race. We need we need control. We need uh, we need rules and guidelines. Yeah, yeah, and it's like you know I you know when I do when I do consulting. Um, You know, there's this, it's very simple. I mean, most people, most people can't start with a blank slate. <laughs> If you put a, bl a, a blank piece of paper in front of somebody and tell them, you know, put, put your, all your ideas in there. Most people don't know what the hell to do. They become intimidated by the, by the white space, right? Then there's others who are like, whoa, you, you basically just unlock, you push the button, and pff, everything's just popping out. I mean, you're not doing anything. You just give them a piece of paper, blank piece of paper, and let them let them go and <laughs> let them do whatever them, something comes to their mind. But other people, you need to draw a circle in there and say, "Listen, so whatever you're thinking about putting in this circle and everything else putting outside the circle, <laughs> you know, you gotta put these all these kind of like you know, uh, as you're saying, you know, constraints around things and and you know, some people will work like that, and I think it's most most people they need the constraint and saying. And, and constraints are good. I mean, it, there's nothing wrong with constraints. I mean, for example, I mean, you 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 shot a movie with seven hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, that's a constraint. <laughs> how how the hell you do that? Well, I know one guy who shot a movie with seven hundred and fifty dollars. I don't I don't know anybody else. <laughs> I mean, I don't know about anybody else, but you clearly did it, and that's a constraint. You have to figure it out. How the hell am I gonna do it with just for the seven hundred and fifty bucks? That's all I got. Okay, you figure it out. You gotta be creative. You gotta be creative, exactly, and that's that's what constraints do. But then there's the other, the other, the unrestraint, which is you know having a blank slate and saying, okay, so you know, knowing what I know now regarding this particular industry, how things work, would I keep doing the same thing all over again? No. How would I do it differently? Bam! And now you you can start over from that point forward. And you have a blank slate to play with. <laughs> you don't have to, you know, you know, assume things. And you know, if if all the other thing you're already saying, the other thing is crap, you won't even do crap. <laughs> and that, I think that's also an important point. I mean, if people would understand what crap looks like, so I mean, if if people under, would understand or have or want to have a curiosity for to to understand what crap looks like. They would not do crap. <laughs> I mean, they would have the, 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 the clarity to say this is what what I want don't want to do. But, I don't want to be don't want to be known or associated with this type of shit. But a lot of people don't see the crap when they when they think of, of crap. Yeah, because they just consume it <laughs> yeah. until it's until it, it until it's you know until it's become entirely obvious that you know. It's <laughs> For example, all the all the startup weekends that you did here i attended a few and then i i was always like asking so who won so what are the projects blah blah blah, blah. yeah and because i was really interested in all that um, innovative stuff applications and all that fun stuff but <clears throat> at the end of it whatever project won or whatever were the finalists they were always so boring or to me most of them useless And simplistic. Yeah, and simplistic. And that, even when I when we went to a, one of the startups weekend that you had the, this guy, this kind of old guy, 40-something, I think, come up to you and be like, after hearing you speak, and be like, hey, you know what? I have a project, blah, 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 blah. And he started talking about a, a website where you can post something and it would automatically post it on, like, 
Craigslist oh, yeah. and uh, Vive Anuncios, which is something in, in Mexico, like and all that stuff at, at the same time. And when you told me, told him, why don't we do something better? And you explained to him what I think and you thought was a better idea, uh, maybe not even better idea, more uh, an idea that more people would be into it, would use it. He was very possessive of his original idea. Uh, he yeah. couldn't he can, see crap. He, he was, was thinking crap. He was thinking crap, and he was very stubborn about it. Yeah, <laughs> but he couldn't see it. So I think that happens to a lot of people that they, since it's the first, well, in 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 the movie business, it's like if you want to be a writer, don't. The first movie you write, it's gonna be crap. So don't be yeah. like, I'm doing my masterpiece. It's gonna be the best movie ever. It, most of the time it's going to be crap so what they tell you to do and it's true just write 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 even if you write three pages and start a new one yeah. with a with another subject or another story or whatever just write it because that's going to help you better yourself a little bit because if I read some of my stuff from 10 years ago I know it's crap and I'm like why why couldn't I see that it was crap And eventually, the the last script I wrote, I liked it a lot. I didn't know I was going to like it that much, but I did like it a lot. But I have like 50 or 100 scripts in my computer that led me to that. So a lot of people think, in, in especially here in Mexico, I don't know other cultures, but they think that their first idea, if it's like good enough for them, it's, it's good enough for everyone and and they go with it. They go with it and they want to do it and it's the best thing in the world and they're going to be successful And three months passes, and they stop doing it. They quit. They they there's no money because they're not they're not into it. And you know, one of the things that's very important is that um, I I usually tell you know want to be entrepreneurs or or people who who who, who you know really want to launch themselves is that imagine that what you're creating is just for your family. Would you feed them crap, <laughs> or would you even would do you, it? Would you, uh -huh, would you even do it? I mean, you know, because consider, consider, I mean, put yourself in there in, in the type of situation, that type of mindset is, you know, you, I mean, and I'm, I'm going to use this word usually because it's not even a, a, a given is that most people would, would not do, would do the best for their, for their family or their friends. But I don't think that's, that's the case for everybody. <laughs> um, Is because if I were to create something for you, for example, I would want to blow your mind. <laughs> I would not want to put you in a hassle. I want I mean, I would think through all these things not to to make your life easier, all these other stuff. But uh, most people do not put themselves in these shoes. They just want to get it out there because you know it's the first thing that pops into their heads, and they're like, "Oh, this is going to be it." And you see so many examples of this. I mean, and quite frankly, I mean, you don't have to go. Uh, too too far. I mean, as you were saying, I mean, and and I I write a blog. I've been writing a blog for I don't I'm almost eight years now. And the first thing, you know, the first draft of everything, and I even wrote about this one time, is is, is shit. <laughs> It, it's crap. The first the first draft of anything you put you put put on a piece of paper or you know to write down or think about is is not the right one. <laughs> is not the right one. Um, it's very it, it's going to be uh, one of those anomalies if it comes. If your genius is is delivered at the first at the first part, but most likely there's been some time before that you've been thinking about it before that that actually happened. You know um, what, what's weird? Like you said right now, the first draft of everything is crap. I have my own blog that I'm I'm not even gonna say the name of it because <laughs> I do exactly that. My first draft is always the one I published, <laughs> but. The weird thing is, well, firstly, I'm not a blogger at all. I just want to, like, put stuff out there. If people see it, cool. If not, I don't care. It's there, it's still there for me. But <clears throat> I've gotten emails from people that say they want to work with me. Because of the blog. <laughs> yeah, because of the blog. And I, I, I ask them, so why do you like it? And they always tell me stuff like, it's easy to read. I like how you you tell the stories. And it has uh, a lot of useful information. That's like the, the main thing. Maybe they tell me that because they want to work for me. Yeah. <laughs> But it's funny how you, I mean, the difference between you and me, that you, you practically, your blog is your work. 
and mine's not. I'm like, I, I do the, I do the craft. Yeah, and and for me, I mean, because people always ask me, like, I mean, I've been writing, like I said, I was, I've been writing a blog for almost eight years now. I mean, in a couple of weeks, going to be eight years, or next week. Um, and why did I start a blog? Well, number one, a lot of people don't know this, but at one point I had like fifteen blogs at the same time. Um, this was way back when, when posters existed, where you could create multiple ones. <laughs> And I started experimenting with that because I have a, quite frankly, I have a lot, a lot of interest. But not I was bring, I was basically just doing crap. Because <laughs> you if you shoot everywhere, you're shooting at nothing. I mean, it's 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 that simple. So I had to to focus, and you know, my current blog became what it is because of that that decision. Um, I decided to to cut you know to cut some stuff and just focus on a few things, and you know, essentially that that's why I keep writing it. Uh, but the other motivation was that, um, you know, I need, I need somewhere to, to put my brain and dump my brain somewhere. And it was, there wasn't a, a, you know, thinking, oh, what's this going to become or whatever. I just wanted to put my brain somewhere. I mean, that was it <laughs> to share with somebody and somebody, if somebody responded, it was cool. If it doesn't, it, it didn't, but there was no, oh, this has to become this, this has to become that. The only, the only thing criteria that I had at that point was, um, I'm going to make it worth somebody's while. <laughs> I'm going to write for somebody, right? And and that's essentially what's happened. I mean, people visit the blog and keep reading it because they feel as though I'm writing for them. I mean, and uh, or they empathize with it or simply they, you know, what a lot of people say is that I make them think and, you know, reflect on, on stuff. But, I um, mean, that's, it, it wasn't really my mission, but that's essentially what it's become. Uh, you know, and, and, you know, going back to this point about uh, motivation, um, and I think this is a good, a good way to, you know, to finish this off, is uh, there's this story on, in the New York Times that um, author Nick Belton wrote, I think it was a, just over a month ago. Um, basically, is, it's about, um, about people who do work just for doing work. Should they put them the, their best effort into it? Is that is that even? I mean, if should they do it? I mean, and he tells his story about his mother, where he has to go and take care of his mother because her her mother his mother is 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 you know nearing her her end of her life, and for the last two weeks of her life he's basically cooking and doing everything for her, and since he knows this is going to be the end for her, he's putting everything into it, like literally putting. He wants to make art for her, <laughs> you know, because he knows it's it's the last the the last weeks or, or days, and at some point, you know, during those last days, he he has to go to a restaurant to buy, um, you know, something that her mother wants because he can't cook it to her standards. So he finds this place, and he goes there, and uh, you know, this this place has some of that best, uh, you know, you know, plate that she wants and. You know, he starts reflecting on this and he's, he asks himself, man, if I tell these people that if these people knew that they are cooking the last, the last meal for my mother, her would, favorite, meal. her favorite meal, would it change the way they approach it, the way they make it? Would they make, make it different? Would they do something? And, you know, this is, this is, I think this is the, 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 the really the core of the discussion because as you know, there's a lot of people, and I, I mean, if you can, you can go into the internet and check out, you know, Gallup uh, engagement, work engagement, they'll tell you, you know, there's pretty much over 80% of people in this world are not doing stuff that they want to do. Um, and, and it doesn't mean that everybody has to be an entrepreneur, because not everybody but, everybody's cut out for it, <laughs> quite frankly. But if you're going to a job, a lot of people are not engaged with their job. They're just, they're just basically robots. <laughs> just going in there and you know it's task one task two and off they go so and and it, imagine if everybody would put their heart into it <laughs> and there's examples by the way in this world of companies that sell commodities and don't they don't really do anything out of the ordinary that you can tell that they actually like what they do and you going back to this you know to this statement about you know over promise or under promise and over deliver these guys over promise and over deliver 
every day. <laughs> and I think that's the attitude where, you know, it separates you from the good and the crap and takes you to great. <laughs> it doesn't mean they do technology better than the other guys. It just means that their attitude as humans is way beyond <laughs> anybody else in, 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 in understanding their place and the, the reason why they're doing something. You know, like that example, you know, if this guy says, you know, you are cooking somebody's last meal today, will that change your perception of your job? <laughs> and, 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 you know, sadly, people do not ask themselves this every day. <laughs> they are just there doing their job. And that's... I think it's a, it's a state of mind. It's a state of mind. It all has to do with your state of mind. Of all the people I've met... I know which people are successful and which are not. Even if the not so su successful ones have like a way better clothes or watches or shoes yeah. or whatever or cars, because it's the state of mind, it's how they talk, it's how what they think, and actually to be an entrepreneur, to do, to be passionate, it all starts with the state of mind. And I think, yeah, it, it, it's it's. It's hard, but if you don't think differently, you're not gonna, you're not gonna be passionate about yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, and, and it starts. It's very simple. I mean, as I was saying on my blog, I always think about somebody when I'm gonna write something. Something I just write for myself, right? But other times, and I know this because those are the ones that get the most hits. Are the ones that I really sit down and say, "So this happened. This guy was saying this. I'm gonna respond. <laughs> I'm just writing for him or for her." And then you know that thing. You know, ends up, you know, like, you know, becoming something everybody's talking about. Um, it's just, you know, focusing on, and it's it's not even about ranting. It's, you know, it's, you know, focusing on on something and and, you know, thinking that you can make a difference in that, <laughs> and then you know that's becomes like a, you know, it starts with the heart starts in the heart and I don't I don't really believe that you can just go out there and do great things if your, your heart isn't into it I mean it just doesn't happen people people need something else other than just uh, what's my paycheck gonna be or <laughs> I mean I, I'm not a cook or anything but even when I do cook for me or my family I I put my heart into it yeah and that's what I told my wife you gotta you gotta give it love after all cooking is an art form it's not yeah like just put water to boil and add pasta and stuff like that. It's, it's, if you put some love into it, you get a way better result. Yeah. And you should be able to do that with everything. everything. With everything. But if you're stuck on a dead-end job, you won't You won't feel like it's, doing that with, with anything. If it doesn't start yeah. with, with you, it, your job won't help. It, you won't it's do also, it. And it's also how you perceive things. I mean, because, you know... It, I recently told someone very close to me that um, I basically I basically told her, listen, how you and everybody else looks at a job, for me, it's an art. So whatever I do, it's my art. <laughs> I take it to heart. It 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 it's constantly in my head. Um, it's very hard for me to not think about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. As opposed to just, you know, following a routine and just uh, call it a day. <laughs> um, I mean, if when you love what you do, you, 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 you do you do it often as possible. Um, and you don't take it for granted. And for, for those of us who actually do it that way and have that perspective, we understand the end result, what it looks like. I mean, for, for me, I, I've, I've uh, you know... If, more than a few times I've been interviewed and people have asked me, you know, what makes you tick? And I say, well, number, I want to see somebody smile. <laughs> but, you know, I'm like a magician because what the magician is after is that, sen that, that, that Kodak moment in somebody's face when everything's like, they're in this moment of, how the hell did you do that? The sense of wonder. And that's what I wanna, really what I'm after. <laughs> that's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for a handshake. I'm not looking for a hug. I'm looking for that, that something in their face that tells me, mm. <laughs> you've just been wowed, <laughs> right? 
you know, and that's that's really it because you bring bring out the child in everybody, and that's a memory. People will not remember what you said, what you did. They'll they'll remember what, how you made them feel. So those are the things that that motivate me to you know, to write a blog and do whatever the hell I want. But <laughs> you need to start this podcast with you. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, it's 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 not about uh, doing it doing crap and. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how anybody could be proud of putting crap into the world um, or even just giving, giving their good enough effort to something. I mean, if you're going to do something, do it with everything you got or not, or don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. Yeah. I mean, if you're not going to, if you don't, if you're not aiming to feel proud about yourself at the end of the day, I mean, don't fucking do it. <laughs> That's the thing about this, of the last movie I did and everything else I've done. This... Before the, before the movie, I used to say things like, well, I did this short film or music video or commercial for $500. So if it sucks, it's because of the budget. But my mentality changed when I finished the film because that's my true passion, filmmaking, is that I, I still say, oh, I did this film with $750, but it's not as an excuse. It's my, it's my wow factor that I made a film with $750 and it doesn't look like it was made with $750. <laughs> and, and, and I'm proud of that. I'm proud of, even if people look at it and it say it's crap, I know it's not because I haven't seen a movie that looks like that with a $750 budget. Yeah. You know, you know what's also sad? I mean, if you go into the corporate world as, as I have to, to have to work, Uh, to do some consulting and whatnot is that you know and the the bureaucracy is pervades this and it's you know some people will managers will say well i'm in charge of so and so amount of budget and that's like they're saying oh look i'm powerful or i mean they're just being assholes really i mean jerks or whatever but um i'm more impressed by the person who doesn't tell me that or the person that says i don't need all that money to do this I just need this. I'm more impressed by that than somebody telling me, "Oh, I'm, I'm in, you know, I'm in charge of all this budget." So you know, suck, suck on me because I'm, I'm cool or whatever. That makes me cool. I'm. That doesn't make you cool. That makes you just another piece in the puzzle. <laughs> I mean, sorry, seriously, another piece in the machine. But I mean, if you take out your piece, I mean, it, would, would anything change? Yeah. I doubt it. And really, that's the mindset. I mean, if if you take anything away, if you take yourself out of the equation, would anything change? <laughs> Would people be, be be better off if you're not in the game? Would people be, be better off if you were in the game? Probably, yeah. And that's really, I mean, it's 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 very 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 important to have that, you know, to reflect on these things because it's, I mean, quite seriously. I mean, there's so much crap in this in this world. I mean, <laughs> it's 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 insane, and I don't think it's gonna stop anytime soon. I mean, and more because we are giving people tools to create more stuff. I mean, 3D printing. Um, I mean, <laughs> the the problem I have right now with distribution in the States is that the distribution game changed because there's a lot of tools, very inexpensive tools to make films right now. So there's a lot of crap in the market, like tons and tons of crap. That's why Netflix does what it does. If you want to submit your film to Netflix, you have to sum submit either by aggregator or you need to submit 100 films to them, which means that you have a lot of films to make or you have a, you bought a catalog of films or do what the aggregators do. You, the aggregators charge you for presenting the film to Netflix, but they, they, grab enough to make 100 films. Mm -hmm. So that's what the, why the, the time to get a confirmation from them is like three months. And then they present the 100 films. Why does Netflix do this? Because not anyone can present the film to them. If it's crap, you need either you pay like $2,000 $2, or $3,000 for an aggregator, or you have the money to like have 100 films in your, in your catalog. Mm -hmm. So that's their way of like taking crap out of the equation. 
which is not good for me because I don't want to pay three thousand dollars to to maybe get my film on Netflix. But yeah, th there's more and more and more crap when things are are um, available, less expensive things. I mean, the camera I use for the film cost me five hundred dollars, and that's what I made the film with. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of people who could, if you could put a camera on us right now. And we talked for an hour and a half, no cuts, no nothing, just us talking on, on about the, on the podcast. That's a film. That's a one hour, one hour, or one and a half hour, thirty, well, one and a half hour minute film. And it that you could sell that as a film. No one would buy it, or maybe one people or two, or but that's a film. <laughs> so that's that that's a huge problem. It's crap, probably crap. Just us talking. It's probably crap. <laughs> no lighting, no nothing, just. But there's 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 a lot of stuff, and it's gonna the the more inexpensive it is, the more there's gonna be. Yeah, I mean it's the best. The best we can do is, you know, do, you know, be responsible for our own crap, <laughs> for our own crap, for our own for our own attitude, and you know, not not um, pollute. <laughs> pollute the world with more crap than it already has. I mean, it's. I would say. I mean, it, I mean, it's just ridiculous. But you know, it's. We can go on and on and talk about this, but uh, you know, one one thing that I would recommend everybody to do is really to take to take notice of the stuff around them and ask themselves, really, is this is this really important? Is this is this? I mean. <laughs> Do we need this? I mean, seriously, we don't. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff we do and we don't really need. <laughs> if you cut out most of the stuff, I mean, there's one, there's, 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 it's one of the reasons why everybody wants, uh, you know, Apple products. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they just get it. Yeah, simple and it works. They do it for people. <laughs> they do it for people. They have a point of view, they have a criteria. They're not just doing it for the hell of it because, you know, if I sell so and so, number of iPhones and we'll have two hundred billion dollars of war chest. And guess what? We can buy three continents with that. They're not doing it for that. <laughs> They're not doing it for it. They do it for the people, for the majority of the people. That's why they do it for that. They cancelled Final Cut Pro Studio. Because I think it was like one percent or two percent of their of the people who bought their products that actually was interested in that side of things, like the the professional edit editing and stuff like that. So they just destroyed Final Cut 7, which was the last one, which a lot of people still use, but they created a new one, Final Cut Pro X, which the pros initially hated, and are, I think, what? Well, well, there was a thing, there was a saying about that, that it was Final Cut Pro X was a, was a great decision for accounting at Apple, mm. but a bad decision for, for, the for the customers. Yeah. And at the end of things, this just put like a, a more than decent editing software in the hands of a lot of people. But I mean, they, 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 they went from, they they didn't think about like this very small percentage and it was a, even though I hated that it was a nice move or a good move for them because now it's a Final Cut X it's used more than probably Final Cut Seven was used mm -hmm. before but I, I I hate it I still don't use it. <laughs> All right, so what's the what's the difference then between crap and good enough? Crap is you don't care. You're just doing things for doing them, and you don't care if they're bad or not. And good enough is you're trying to make something good, even though you know that it's probably gonna be crap. That actually, that's what happened with my film. It got to a point where, okay, this is good enough for now, <laughs> and we don't have time, we don't have money, we don't have nothing. So this is good enough. But it was never like, but this is crap. No, but, this is, but yeah. you learned. You learn yeah, and you say, okay, this is good enough. I just can't take it to the next level because so-and-so constraints, which are out of my control, but I learned this. So in the next one, exactly. I'm going to make sure they should, you know, I repeat the same mistakes, but 
I do this and this and that. In the next better, film, I should be able to make a better film with the same amount of money with yeah, all the things exactly. I've learned. And that's like exactly. my contribution to not making more crap. Exactly. One of the worst things is that that you know a lot of people do not do not learn from their mistakes or from the mistakes of others for that matter. Exactly. They just keep on doing and doing and doing, and that that is really what the headache is. You know that. That's why you see much, so much crap out there. They're not really looking around. They're just... Uh, I mean, it's just... The motivation is not there to... <laughs> you know, to, you know, to, do, to do things better. I mean, it's quite simple like that. Um, so, for you guys out there, it's... You know, I don't know what your motivation is, but... It's... You know, nothing... You know, going back to our points, there's nothing... Nothing works on the first try. The first thing you do is crap. You put that thing in your head, put put a post-it note in front of your in front of your face, and you know you have to edit. Like we're gonna edit this podcast, <laughs> uh, all the crap out. Make sure the good stuff remains. Uh, what do you think? Anything else? Just that. Don't expect to be triumphant on the first try. But you do have to make crap, just don't publish it. Make crap, better the crap. That's why in all the software there's a 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, because they're just making it better. So if you if you're a, you have something to do with films, if you direct, direct short films, you don't have to post all of them online to get like, oh, very great job from your family members and stuff like that. that it doesn't really count. Uh, just don't post it. Just keep making it better, 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 better. And when you think you have something good enough, post it and yeah. see what happens. It's the same thing with apps. The same thing with whatever you want to do. Just keep making it better. Show it to friends and family. And uh, if friends and family don't like it, then it, it's pretty obvious it's crap. Because <laughs> most, yeah. most of the time, family members will be like, yeah, it's cool. If I like it, so you can. They won't be honest though. <laughs> Since yeah. They're not honest. But if they are honest, it's because it's it crap. Sucks. Yeah. You know, it's also important to to um, create stuff for yourself uh, with with the with the intent of making crap to learn cra through through making crap. Yeah, that's why I did the film. I mean, it's it's really that simple. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's how you learn. And learning is the more, more, most important thing here. It's not the the. I mean, I mean the the end result of all of this is what did I learn? Yeah, it's it, it's not a it's not a failure if you keep trying. Because I mean, if you if you talk, for example, even to us or even people who you know consider great, if you talk to them and you ask them what what are you satisfied most about? They'll probably tell you that the, the thing that they created is not the thing that was in their head. Yeah. Because they're not done yet. <laughs> they see more and more and more and more. So it's really like a process. But at some point, you have to deliver something. The best example... Just make sure it's not crap. <laughs> the best example I always tell people about is The Simpsons. It's been going on for, what, 25 years? 25 years ago. 20-something years. And if you compare the first season to the last season, it's worlds apart. Like, it's completely different. But they <clears throat> they always uh, made it better and better and better and better. You can, you can start with crap, but make it better. Don't, don't be proud of the crap. Yeah. Just make it better and make it better and make it better. And then you'll be able to feel a little bit prouder when it doesn't suck. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, you know, what's going on in the world right now with all these technologies, emerging technologies coming up, I mean, it's going to be very interesting to see how, you know, they're applied, you know, that sense of what's possible. Um, and I think the expectations are very high because, you know, everybody wants to, to play around with these things, but it's like everything else. I mean, the first try is not going to probably going to work. I mean, it's going to work, you know, good enough. It's going to be good enough, but it's going to be to a point where, you know, this is so great, it's like... <laughs> if you do crap, but put your heart into it, 
It's gonna be good it's enough. It's gonna be good enough. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the difference. <laughs> so yeah. just like like a film producer friend of mine told me, whatever you do, if you're gonna do a seven hundred fifty dollar movie, which is what I spend on one days of uh, catering <laughs> and a production, if you're gonna do it, go ahead and do it because you need to get it out of your system. But put do it the best you can. Do it the, even if it's a low budget, even if it sucks, even whatever. Do the best you can. Always do the best you can on all the aspects of filmmaking, mm -hmm. from script to production to filming to uh, post production, everything. Just do the best you can. Put your heart into it. And that's the same thing I would say to everyone. And that's, that's the difference. You could have made a very, very, very crappy movie. <laughs> you were there. I know. <laughs> I was there and I was in it. <laughs> I remember I was thinking, okay, so this is how it goes. Because <laughs> I was thinking, man, this could be so much better if we did this and that and that and that. But, you know, I had to restrain myself. <laughs> yeah. My, my response was always like, hey, it's a $750 movie. There's no take, budget. Take There's it no easy. You know, take it yeah. easy. <laughs> Do the best you can. I, I, I started doing the best I could with uh, the angles with uh, the way we recorded the audio. I mean, there was, we did, if a, a veteran of uh, filmmaking was on the set, he would have gone crazy. We were doing everything we shouldn't be doing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we were doing everything wrong. I know how to do it right, but we didn't have the, the money to make it right. So instead of making it the way it should be done without the money, it, that would, M create crap because we were gonna try to do something that we we can't we can't yeah. but i adapted all the script all the scenes everything to what we did have and made the best of the film with what we had yeah. and that's i think what made the difference for it but i mean it's still it's still crap i mean it's it's not the best movie i've done because it's the first one but i'm gonna keep making more films until I'm, I'm reach a point where I'm like, okay, this is a, a good film. I'm going to make it better next time, but I'm, I'm happy with what I'm doing right now. That's probably it. Yeah. That's, that's what it takes, man. It's to keep sharpening the saw. <laughs> exactly. Eliminating what doesn't work before it gets dull. Elimin it's, it's really a process of, of, Elimination and then adding, elimination, adding, elimination. <laughs> Experimenting. Yeah. A lot of people don't understand that and it drives me crazy. I yeah. have a friend, I have a few friends who have businesses and sometimes they're like, even though I'm a filmmaker, which has nothing to do with an actual business, a lot of, of my friends are like, hey, do you have a, do you have any advice for blah, 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 or because I really love, love everything that has to do with like uh, marketing and all that stuff. And they ask me about it. And whenever I tell them that, you know what? I mean, I can give you all these kinds of uh, tips or advice or stuff you could do. But at the end of it, you have to experiment. They're all experiments. Because no one's going to be able to tell you, okay, if you want to do this, then do this, this, this. And it's going to work 100% of the time. It's impossible. And I prefer to think of stuff a little bit more out of the box or more innovative and i think that scares a lot of people like i mean for ha for example my friend could be like do you think i should raise my prices <laughs> and i'm like if it's not if, if you're not doing the 30 30 30 with your with your money you're gonna have a bad time so if it's going to help you reach your 30%. Uh, and even though I, I explained to him that, you know what? Even though I explained that to him, that you sometimes, uh, big companies use a AB template for websites. Yeah. And that's, I, I just heard about that. Uh, Target uses that. So a lot of big companies do that. They're experimenting to see what sells more. It's not that they're not certain. They just want to know what sells more at what time of the year. Yeah. And even though I explain that to my friend or to my friends, they, they still don't get it. I don't know what they're waiting for 
but you have to experiment. You have to experiment, see what works for you, because something that worked for another guy won't work for you, or maybe it will. You have to experiment, and it amazes me how people, they just don't get it. They, they're they scared of experimenting, but that's the only way you're gonna... You're gonna do something that's gonna transcend. I mean, one of my cousins has been running a restaurant for like 20 years. And she's one of the more successful restaurateurs in in Tijuana. In yeah, in Baja, stuff like that. And he, he's always he told me, Do you think I sit here every day in my office? looking at people and looking at other restaurants and see what I can copy from them? No. I'm here every day thinking, what can I do to make the restaurant better? What can I do to make the people's experience better? And, and that's a, a successful guy. Not a guy who has a, a, a restaurant for one or two years and shuts it down. And he and for the restaurant to be where it is right now, it took him like ten years to to make it way way better than it was before. It took him like ten years or fifteen years or something like that since he started working uh, in the restaurant. It's a family operated restaurant, so that's the difference between. There's a lot of people who are like, oh, I want to be like your cousin. I want to have a. The, the, a, a great restaurant like him and all the, the, the customers that he has because that restaurant has three generations of customers like I remember my parents used to take me they still do I used to go with my grandparents and now I take my daughter so and it's the same with almost all the customers there it's, it's it but it's one of the key things is whenever you go you get the same the same treatment most of the waiters are still there since like ages ago and the food tastes the same but you can't do that without like being constantly there trying to make everything better ensuring that everything is going the way it should be it's a lot of work and a lot of people just say they want what he has the success he has the whatever the everything that he has but when you start to tell them okay you know what well i talked to him and this is how he does it they, they, I don't know, they, they get scared or they're like, oh, no, that's that's too complicated. Or that's too much work. I can't do that. It's impossible. Got to make it work. If you if you want to win a marathon, you're going to go get a coach who actually won a marathon before. That's the only way you're going to win one. And the, the easiest way to win one. So I don't know. That, that still amazes me how a lot of people don't want to experiment and i'm experimenting with my film i mean i'm right now i'm not making money out of it and whatever little money i get i invested in in i don't invest it in uh a sure a 100 percent fail proof marketing plan because my film cannot be marketed the way it is it's it's you have to figure out what could work for you i'm, I'm just trying to kind of redesign the whole okay so i have an independent film it's a low budget film it's about zombies and aliens and a lot of people think oh you got it made because zombies are the big hit right now but it's it's i don't think it's gonna sell because of that because it's still a low budget film i'm thinking it's gonna sell to all the people who want to make films and and i'm presenting to them you know what you don't need a million dollars. You don't need a hundred thousand dollars. I did it for seven hundred fifty dollars, and here, here it is. You want to buy it and see what I, what I did with it, and that's more. Um, that's my marketing plan. Like sell it, sell my story, sell how I did it to people who are interested in doing uh, films or or in the, that are studying for this kinds of things. So I can't I I can pay for. Um, for marketing for my film because even if I spend ten thousand dollars on the marketing of the film, that doesn't guarantee people are gonna see it. So I I gotta like experiment, which is going back to everything. I'm experimenting and I'm, and I'm losing money experimenting, but eventually I'm gonna see what works and I'm gonna make all that money back. I mean, it's, it's, it's life hits you. 
And if you're afraid to get hit, you're not going to do anything. You just need to be like, okay, I'm going to get hit a few times, maybe more than I want to. But eventually, I might win this. Yep. It's it's really just... Um, I mean, we're, without experimentation, there's no innovation. <laughs> yeah. You you won't really... And that's... It's not, it's not a linear process that's really chaotic and messy. And, I mean, there's no... But you know what? For us... And this is, I think, why we're still friends after, what, like, three, four, five years? <laughs> because in reality, we don't have a lot of things in common. But what we do have is that we we love thinking outside the box and we love taking risks and i mean i think we talked about this but if someone approaches me with a project and it's like a 90% possibility that it's going to work out it's going to be successful i don't i don't take it i don't like it it's boring it bores me like all i have to do is just press record and you're going to do the rest of it yeah um no thanks. I, I mean, I'm addicted to to being chaotic and messy, and it, it's fun, and I want to have fun. There's no point in not having fun. So when someone tells me that, hey, how can I do this? How can I do that? I, I immediately start telling them crazy things, and they, I, I don't get why they're not excited as I am to do all that stuff, to experiment with all that stuff, and and make life fun. I don't get it. I have to understand it, but I don't get it. Yeah, it's just um, it's it's a lot of people don't understand that that uh, Chinese proverb, uh, chaos, where brilliant brilliant dreams are born, um, <laughs> and that's true, because within the chaos, um, there's you, a clarity. You, you have to yeah, you've got to figure it out. <laughs> you have to figure it out. I mean, it's not it's not simple. It, you know, all this stuff goes back to to making great stuff. I mean, it, it doesn't happen at the first time. It it's really is the process of, of of figuring it out. You know, simplicity simplicity is not easy because you 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 have to be very thoughtful about where you're gonna leave out, and it goes to filmmaking, it goes to everything. Because even this damn podcast, because we have to edit it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna. It's, it's edit a constant it. stuff of editing. And we're always editing something. And regarding this podcast, we're going to try and make it better and better and better. Yeah. We're not just going to be here all the time sitting and talking, talking and that yeah. stuff. We're, we're figuring, we'll figure, you know, different different formats and different things. We'll experiment with the thing and, you know, eventually we'll come up with a, with something that, that um, you know, kind of becomes the official way. official way of doing this thing. But right now we're still... Figure it out. <laughs> yeah, we're making crap and we're <laughs> polishing the crap. The crap. <laughs> you know, you know when 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 I've gotten to, um, you know, not ju not just myself, but with other people's projects or you know other corporations' projects, is creating the expectation that during. Because everything at the beginning sounds so great, right? We have this idea, and then this is what we want to happen. Oh, fun, great. Let's, 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 let's start a party, <laughs> right? And everybody's, you know, hugging each other and high-fiving, whatever. But what they don't understand is that the, the middle of the whole process is going to look, you know, chaotic. <laughs> so at the beginning, I always create that expectation. You know, yeah, yeah this, this sounds all great, but, you know, the, the possibility of failure is... is is humongous <laughs> all right so let, let's not forget about that and what's going to drive us to failure so there is a huge possibility of failure and we'll drive ourselves to failure if we lose the big picture you know we stop we stop giving a damn about the end result um you know because one thing one thing you can count on to to identify the potential for you know innovation is that the people who you work with are willing to to figure it out. And that means going through crap. <laughs> that means, you know, going through uh, a bunch of unknowns and, uh, you know, dark alleys and that seem to have no, no way to go. And you gotta, you gotta find your, your, your will, your way through. Um, and that's a lot of, 
going back and forth, going back and forth. You know, one company I did, I do respect a lot is Pixar. Um, Pixar famously um, restarted Toy Story 2 about three quarters of the way when they were about to release. So basically they redid the whole movie in about, I think it was six months after they dedicated about nine or ten to it beforehand. Wow. So, and that's really going back to having a criteria of what we're putting out there. We are not somebody, you know, in terms of, in terms of Pixar, they are not a company that will put crap out there because they have high 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 standards for themselves and they, 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 they're accountable for that within the company. So <laughs> it's just how it is. And I respect that a ton. It's like, goddamn, I mean, Pixar is, is like, wow. <laughs> I can't, I mean, I'm like, God damn, I want to work there. <laughs> I would be willing to work there just to, just to be in that type of environment where, you know, high standards are expected. And then, you know, it's, 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 you know, that anything you put out there is going to be, has to be great. <laughs> That's also another important thing. If you were saying that the, the, those are higher standards and you w want to work there and stuff like that, I, I got to work at a, a few, marketing agencies in LA and those they were huge and the way they they do stuff is so different that you can't even imagine you can imagine how it would be like but it's nothing like you imagined it's it, it's super fun it's super crazy it's a uh, there's a reason why they're the best and I think experiencing that and if any of you guys gals or older guys and gals have the opportunity to work at a big company that has something to do with what you love go for it you're gonna learn so much stuff that you didn't even know existed yeah. what you thought was the right thing to do or right way to do stuff you were gonna be like that it's not even close to what these guys are doing and if they're doing it it's working for them and they got to that point because of the things they did and how they did so that's my recommendation to all you guys If you have the ability to work at a at a place that's well known for what it does, do it. Even if you're an entrepreneur and even if you want to sustain yourself alone and even if you don't want to have a boss, blah, 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 do it. It's going to help you a ton and you'll produce less crap yeah. right off the bat. My, 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 uh, my closing thought is that... Your second it, closing thought. My second closing thought um, is that that number one if you have to surround yourself with with great stuff um you know there's there's a a saying michael jackson a quote by michael jackson says study the greats to become greater it's that simple so if you surround with with great stuff you will have a good um place to start a good place to start um, and you will you will you will put yourself in such a place where you know the high standards you know and, and, and understand that um, and also you want to surround yourself with people who also want to be great <laughs> yeah it's really simple that's a lot of that I think that's one of the rules of Arnold Schwarzenegger for success to like surround yourself with a uh, with great people and another rule is say no to the ignore the naysayers that's another one the unlucky people yeah so what i did in the movie i couldn't surround myself with great people because normally great people don't work for free but what i did have to do was rely only on myself to do everything i i, I didn't rely on anyone else to do anything so if you can't If you can't surround yourself with great people, you have to be try and be the best you can yeah. and only rely on yourself. Don't if you can't get great people, but you can get so so people or crap people, don't even get them. Just rely on yourself yeah. and you're gonna you're gonna be way better than someone who doesn't care about your project or your app or your whatever. So that's that's like what? something extra to what Horace said. One of the ways that and by the way, they don't have to work with you either. I mean they can be outside Friends. collab collaborators as long as they have something a mindset of of you know 
of doing good, of doing great. I mean, that's why I have like standards. three friends, have three, three or four good friends, because they all have something that would make me better. They have a, they feed me with their creativity, with their way of thinking, with their. Uh, what else could, could they feed me with? Yeah, that's the, their way of life, how they see life and all this. And they're very different from each and every one of them. But I only try and surround myself with those few people because, you know, I know a lot of people who are more normal people with a normal mindset. And it's, it's just boring. It gets boring. Yeah. And by the way, people who have high standards are not easy to deal with. <laughs> um and that's one of the one of the trade-offs that uh, you will be challenged. <laughs> but that's what you want. You want to be challenged. You don't want somebody to tell you what you're already thinking. You don't want you don't want to surround yourself with yes people. You want to surround yourself with people who will challenge you, and people who don't have simplistic uh, points of view. You know who who have exponential point of view. Um, <laughs> like what we do. We, we don't when we chat. On Facebook, we're not even saying hello or anything. It's just like it goes to the point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You either send me a link with something that you know it's gonna yeah. provoke something, and we start talking about that, or I'm like, I send you a question that huh? that I think it's like maybe you could know the answer or, or what I want your take on it. It's just like straight to the point. Blah blah blah. Okay, cool. That's yeah, it. and that's fine. We understand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we understand it, and that's. You know, it, 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 you know, one of the things that I've done is that I have I have mentors, but I choose my mentors. Uh, I choose them wisely, and I've never met any of them physically. I've met them all through Twitter, um, and I've chosen them because they and 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 by the way, I mean they, yes, they are older than I am, but they don't have they have the brains of somebody who's like a twenty year old. You're still going. They're still going, and and I like talking to them. I like uh, you know, listen to listening to their stories because um, they are the same way. It's 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 in terms of, I mean, we're not in the same age group, and obviously we don't have the same things in common. But in terms of our what connects us is that sense of you know they want to help somebody who's you know who wants to be who wants to be great. <laughs> And they want to see more of that, and I want to surround with myself with people who want to want to see that. Therefore, we have a bunch of stuff to talk about, and a lot of stuff that they went through, that I'm going through. Well, they I can they can relate to that, and you know my friend, one of my friends or one of my mentors, it always reminds me. You know, remember the serenity pr prayer. <laughs> remember that. Always remember that. Why? Because you know, it, it, in terms of of not having high standards, I mean. Most people don't do that, don't don't have that, and I have to constantly remind myself what he says. I mean, is that's always on my head, um, you know, that I can't control everybody. <laughs> I can only control my attitude, and if that's enough, th then things will change. Sometimes, you know, it, it, it is what it is. I mean, and you don't you don't you don't win every bra every battle, but um, it's it's a it's a constant it's a constant thing. And but you know, the thing that that takes you farther and further and you know eliminates a lot of obstacles is surrounding you know going back to that surrounding yourself with great who want to be people who want to be great so you have to if you're creating a team is you know you have to have that criteria to, to understand you know this person yeah i like them but or i like her but i mean that's it <laughs> you make me laugh you can tell jokes whatever the hell um you know we like the same color but <laughs> You don't have that mindset, and it's nothing personal. But for this journey, <laughs> you can't be on it because we're gonna clash. I mean, it's really you that can't simple. be my Sam to my pro. You can't. Yeah, exactly. There's no yin to the yang. There's nothing, and and it's not it's not personal. It's simply, you know, for the task of hand. <laughs> you know, there's the, one of the things that that Pixar and, and I recommend you guys read this, the, the Creativity Inc. because it's it's written by the president of Pixar. At Catmull, so it comes directly from him, not from a consultant who went in there and asked questions. Um, one of the things that he says is that, and I take this to heart, is basically, if if you if you if you have a, a mediocre idea and you give it to a great team, 
that great team is going to turn that mediocre idea into something great. But if you if you give a great idea to a mediocre team, that team is going to take that great idea and make it mediocre. <laughs> so understand the difference. <laughs> understand the difference between people going back to the you know crap and good enough. Because <laughs> people who make things great do not do not even play in crap world or 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 even good enough world. They it's, used to play. They they it's a, it's a process. Yeah, it's a process. But they don't stay there. <laughs> It's exactly. a process they gotta go through, because it's gotta go through it, and they understand that. <laughs> but the point is not to stay there. You're gonna break that. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, guys, for listening. We went a little bit off today, but you know, it, hang on with us. We'll bear with us. We'll we'll figure out this out, and uh, we'll create a a much more shorter podcast uh, where it's more compact and. Hopefully all this stuff that we're talking about is useful to you guys and inspiring. Um, uh, we will be posting this podcast in my blog, Game Changer, www.game-changer.net, in the co- next week. Um, hopefully you guys follow us on SoundCloud. We have it up on SoundCloud now. You guys can follow us there and also follow us on Twitter. Um, you can find me at, at Jorge Barva on Twitter. I'm usually always there, so have any questions, you know, want to talk, whatever, just send me a, send me a ping me. Um, and uh, until next week, I don't know what we're going to discuss next week, but uh, we'll make sure it's fun and interesting. It's not going to be crap. It's not going to be crap. Exactly. It's going to be our <laughs> third episode. It's not going to be crap. <laughs> we promise you that. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.